People's eyes bug out when there's a multi-billion dollar IPO. How about a two trillion dollar IPO? That is how much the Saudi royal family values its state-run oil company, Saudi Aramco. However, there's a huge mystery developing. Everyone's trying to solve it. Which stock exchange will host the initial public offering? Charlie Gasparino has exclusive details. And you also have some breaking news coming out of the White House, right, which, which is pretty juicy. Hold well, off on that yeah, okay. and go to Saudi first. Well, I mean, from what we understand, and listen, this is a moving target. Uh, it is going to be, it could be the biggest IPO ever. Whoever gets this gets the bragging rights for, like, uh, I mean, that's a listing that you want to go to. That blows yeah. snap out of the water. We're talking about a huge company. They're looking to sell up to 5% of, of, of Saudi Aramco. We're hearing that they're going to pick a number of exchanges, but there's going to be a main exchange where they trade on. That major exchange, from we understand, is if you look at it right now, is between the London Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. From we understand, NASDAQ is essentially out of it from a U.S. perspective. If they're going to list here, they're not going to list at the NASDAQ as of now. And it's light, and the major exchange, so the lead exchange, you have to like list somewhere where they do the IPO. Yeah. You know, I don't know. You know, they, there was talk about them spreading around for three. Hong Kong, I, I don't know how you do London. three. I don't know how you do three uh, IPOs. They just want massive exposure. Okay, great. But you got to do. You got to have a listing. You got to in order to sell securities in generally in the U.S. and almost around the world. It needs to be somewhere in the U.S. or London. And we're hearing those are the two that are vying for it. Well, London but, and New York. But London is going to possibly lose its clearing operations well, if it continues. That's, with an, that's a great point. And uh, advantage New York Stock Exchange. And if they get this, this is a big, big win for Tom Farley, for the New York Stock Exchange, for Jeff Sprecher, for the whole. Did I say it right? No. Sprecher. Every time. <laughs> okay. Sprecher. Okay, Sprecher. But it's mainly Farley, <laughs> Tom Farley, who runs the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. This will be probably his biggest payday ever. This will be. His moment in the sun if he gets this Good deal. Good for him. He's a good guy. Yeah. Nice guy. So everybody's going for this. Uh, and if, it, if he gets it, it's a big fe feather in the cap. And the New York Stock Exchange shows that America, America's, you know, the, 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 the epicenter, what was known as the epicenter of capitalism when Dick Rousseau was running it, still has a little more juice. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. Again, I would say advantage New York Stock Exchange. Can you this, get to the juicy DC story? Okay. We understand. Now, Gary, everybody knows Gary Cohen. He, you know, Liz has a kind of crush on him. He's a big, tall. Yeah, he's a Cleveland guy. Cleveland guy, but he's a very impressive. I, I have a big, crush on anybody dude. from Cleveland. You know, he looks a little like, I don't know. <laughs> he was a tough guy. He used to be the number two at Goldman. Now he's Trump's NEC chief, National Economic Council. From what we understand, he is really hurt. His feelings are hurt because of so much of the bad. He's getting some degree of bad press. People are saying that he's a liberal, which he is, in a conservative administration. He's butting heads with Steve Bannon. That's getting out there. And he's starting to feel it. You know, he has feelings too. So, well, from what I understand, he's going to have a a, um, a dinner party with journalists, Ooh. candlelight dinner. Can we be invited? Well, here's why he's planning it. I understand he's planning it. He's talk, telling people, uh, he's telling journalists that he likes. Uh, he has not told me. Has he told you yet? He, you and he were were kind of tight at well, one time. Well, you know, I, as I said, if it's Lou the Toe Groza or Gary Cohn, I'm a fan of all Cleveland. How about how about who do you think is hotter, Gary Cohn or Steve Bannon? If you no, just from a woman's Gary, standpoint, Gary Cohn. Gary Cohn's better looking, right? More. Well, I just Put know together. him. You know, okay. I go on personality. Oh. I've not ever met Steve Bannon. Okay. Um, he's the guy. See, I'm with very the, female. I go with the... Yeah, you, you go with the brain <laughs> over the brawn, right? <laughs> yeah. Typical valley girl. But anyway. <laughs> That's an insult, dude. Is I'm that, from the other side of the insult? canyon. Is that like... Yeah, well, if, yeah. He's not an anti-Italian you know, thing like with me. Anyway, West side. what I'm saying is Gary Cohn, everybody, I want everybody to know, I'm getting a rap here, Gary Cohn has feelings too, and he wants to be nice to journalists, and he wants you, reporters... Okay to be nice to him. He's big, he's mean, but he has feelings. And, and we, have, we have table feelings. manners, so invite me and Charlie. <laughs> Nothing left but <laughs> feelings. Charlie, thank you very much.